My name is Ikena Nzoe. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Relief. So what we do at Relief is we invent technology and we operate that technology to reduce post-harvest loss for smallholder farmers. So we've started our work in the sustainable oil palm sector. So we help smallholders crack palm kernels um, and then we basically take them and sell them further into the value chain. Yeah, so Relief started back in 2015. It was a group of three members from my family and three of my cousins. We all came together to start an organization to do work in Nigerian agriculture. And so we brought together members of the African diaspora to work on nonprofit uh, consulting cases for agribusinesses. And throughout the process, we just fell in love with the process and decided that we wanted to go further and solve deeper problems in the value chain. Yeah, we chose Palm because of first principles. So when we moved back to Nigeria in 2017, we traveled all over the country. I've been to over 20 states. And so what it looked like was going to Ojota, getting in a bus and traveling all over the country, following value chains from smallholder farmers all the way to consumer markets like Mile 12, and basically figuring out where there were opportunities to create technology that could create more prosperity for all the value chain players. I, it, it's difficult, I, I would say, between production um, and post-harvest handling. So from a production standpoint, if you look at oil palm, our yields per hectare are, in some cases, a fifth of what they are in other countries. But then you can also see and observe a great deal of post-harvest loss. And so there are kind of two ways to attack the problem. You can either produce more and continue to waste a high percentage, or produce the same amount and reduce the wastage. And so what our company focuses on is making as much value from what we have today and then gaining the resources so that we can make long-term investments to increase production and the productivity per hectare in the future. Yeah, so we consider ourselves pre-processors. So we work in between smallholder farmers and large industrial processors of food commodities. And so what we do is we work with the smallholders, we handle the last mile logistics, and then we add value to the commodities so that they're high quality. So when an African food factory receives these raw materials, they're able to process them and get the profit that they expected out of it. We have a really big issue in Africa around industrialization, and that industrialization is difficult because it's very hard to get high quality raw materials into a factory's door. And if you have low quality inputs, you will have low quality outputs and profit. And so where our company tries to work is basically lubricating that link between smallholder farmers and the food factories so that we're able to add more value to our commodities within the country um, rather than exporting them and having others uh, add that value to them. Yeah, definitely. So there are hardware and software sides of our business. So one of our greatest observations after moving back to Nigeria and traveling throughout the country was that ag tech companies need to be involved in the value chain. We need to pick up a bag of a commodity. We need to move, we need to be actors in the value chain. And so developing hardware and operating proprietary technology that increases our processing yields is how we are a player in the market that has an advantage. But beyond that, in order to secure the raw material that we need from smallholders at an affordable price, you also have to use software so that you're able to communicate because you have to understand these smallholders are incredibly decentralized. The average plot sizes are small. And so technology, especially digital technology, is very helpful in driving efficiencies and gathering data so that you can optimize how you acquire raw materials from these farmers. So you start and you become an actor in the value chain through hardware, you need to do something in the value chain. You can't just be a professional service firm kind of standing back, you know, telling people what to do. You need to be in the value chain, you need to be doing something tangible that adds value to the commodities. But beyond that, you can use technology to drive economies of scale, to have more predictability around price, volume, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so it's been, a, it's been a real balance for our business. And I would say in, in the past, We've really focused very deeply on the hardware part, developing a proprietary piece of technology that we're currently patenting. But now we're shifting into the process of doubling down on the software side of our business so that we can drive the volumes of inputs into that piece of hardware. 
because the way I like to put it is a factory that doesn't have raw material isn't a factory, it's just a building, it's a warehouse. And so you have to be able to acquire the raw material, but you need to have machines that can add value to them as well. Yeah, well, I think the first step is to form a relationship. You're working with a person, they haven't worked with you before, and you are oftentimes encouraging them to do business in a different way than they've done it in the past. And something incumbent in, in that change of behavior is trust. And so the first step is to form trust with folks. Now, once that trust is there, the second step is to engage people as close to the way they've been engaged in the past. So, you know, farmers have phones, they have feature phones, they receive SMS text messages. So if you're trying to communicate with your smallholders, don't go and build a, an app, just send them text messages. Utilize USSD technology. Now on the back end, when you're trying to coordinate your own team, you can develop a lot of interesting technology and dashboards and things like that. And so it's really important to think about the user experience for even our internal team and the tools that they need to be successful, but also the ease of accessibility for the smallholders that we work with. And so using technologies like SMS and USSD. Yeah, so it's, it's a really simple process. Um, we buy palm nuts from smallholder farmers. We take them to our pre-processing center, we crack them open, and then we sell the kernels that are within those nuts to food factories. That's how we make money. No, we use our, we use our software um, internally. I think the, the market for software for factories in Nigeria uh, is still nascent. Um, and I think many of the large factories, the big FMCGs and players of that sort, um, are operating on more legacy software suites like SAP and things of that nature. Um, and so we build these tools for ourselves internally and we look forward to the point in the future where there's a commercial opportunity to license and sell them to others. Um, but we're really focused on making our process of buying nuts, cracking them and selling them to factories as efficient um, and as high volume as possible. Yeah, so I mean, the, the fundraising journey is a journey, um, and I think you learn a lot about your business and about the perception of, of your traction as a result of, of fundraising. Um, we've definitely had our successes at times and other times where um, we had to go back to the drawing board and think about you know, the next steps. Um, but yeah, we, we're, we're happy with where we are, and we're really excited to be focused on the operating side of the business at this point um, and, and pushing um, to further and further scale. Yeah, I think it's really just around finding a business model that is truly scalable um, and one that you can make money with today. Um, and I think we as a company spend a good bit of time in that process of just trying different business models, seeing how they worked, how they didn't work, if they were truly scalable, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think the process of finding product market fit was um, you know, something that took our, our company some time. Um, I would also say that uh, developing uh, proprietary hardware in Nigeria is, uh, is a journey, uh, and hopefully a journey that will be easier for others uh, after we have done our part. Um, but it's, it's very difficult, you know. If I, um, I want to bring in some technology, you know, I have to pay for it, wait three months for fabrication, then someone puts it on the water for three months, it's held at Apapa for a month, I bring it down on ground and maybe two months later I've commissioned it. And so when I'm planning out my capital, I have to be thinking about you know, a lead time on a decision of eight months for hardware that I'm bringing in. And if I'm in the process of research and development, when I don't know which technology is the right one, it's a very difficult thing to solve for with the other priorities that you have within the business. But it's part of the process and I think it's what needs to be done. I mean, other countries have developed their food systems by doing research and development. And so while there's a lot of great stuff that we can import, we as Africans also need to embrace the responsibility of developing technology to industrialize our food systems. And we're happy to take on that challenge. Yeah, so I mean, oil palm is a very big market. Um, yeah, we're, we're sitting in a, in a $3 billion vegetable oil market here in Nigeria. And so it's, it's a large opportunity. And 80% of that market is driven um, by smallholders, which we target. Um, and so we see Nigeria as a really great starting beachhead market. Um, but beyond Nigeria, I think we think about West Africa at large as, as an opportunity. 
where you have smallholder driven oil palm production, you have a lack of technology to handle this palm nut cracking process. Um, and so we see geographic expansion as kind of a first step. One thing that's very natural is we're kind of on the eastern side of Nigeria. Um, and so moving into western Cameroon would be rather natural. Um, and then also looking at the southwest in Nigeria and um, Ivory Coast in, in the future too. Hey, I'm Ikenna and you're watching Tech Talks on Guardian TV.